Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvi Sesa Sunyavadi Paskatya Dissatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Vaiti Gadadharsh Shivasadi Gauravakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Gora Primanadi Hare Bo Well, I really want to thank Don Prabhu for speaking about his appreciation of Bhakti Chu Maharaj. Everything he said is true, and there are no words, I mean, speaking on behalf of, of the this temple and all the devotees, uh, we all have a great debt of gratitude for the courage, the compassion, and the... Uh, let's see, determined uh, action of uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj to keep this temple intact, keep the congregation encouraged by his good wishes, by his gentle behavior, and his determined act actions to set things right. And this is necessary every once in a while in Krishna consciousness, but there are very few, few people that can rise up to the occasion of determined action because you have to have, first of all, an understanding of Srila Prabhupada and how he managed and how deeply he had a uh, desire to help devotees uh, make spiritual progress and his understanding of how to preach Krishna consciousness. Uh, you preach by encouraging people, not by threatening them or uh, undermining them. And Prabhupada said that Krishna consciousness, he described it as a process of kicking people up. He said that in in the material world, a one person advances by kicking somebody else down. He said, but in Krishna consciousness, we kick up. In other words, instead of kicking people down, we want to push them upwards in their spiritual life, in their determination to be uh, a servant, Srila Prabhupada and his wonderful ISKCON uh, transcendental movement. Uh, spreading the glories of Lord Krishna using Lord Chaitanya's method, which is Harinam Sankirtan, massive Harinam and massive food distribution or prasadam distribution and book distribution, authorized books with the uh, original commentaries of uh, Acharyas, uh, summarized and crystallized by Srila Prabhupada in his purports and uh, always preserving the integrity of Krishna's original message in the Bhagavad Gita without changing anything. And Prabhupada said, my only qualification is I have not changed anything. I'm simply repeating what my spiritual master uh, taught me and and I haven't changed one word of Krishna's original Bhagavad Gita. So, he, as I said before, he, he described himself as a post peon, a uh, humble servant of the post office or the, or the uh, uh, a letter deliverer. And they deliver the lever, letter or money intact to the recipient. And they don't claim anything for themselves. And they're satisfied with whatever salary they receive. In the same way, the devotees 
deliver intact the message of Krishna without changing it. And they're satisfied by the service itself. They're not looking for any material remuneration for their service. So Prabhupada describes himself as a post peon or a simple letter carrier uh, delivering the message of Krishna intact. And that is the qualification of a bona fide spiritual master. Uh, Krishna is the original spiritual master, and if we simply deliver his message without changing anything, not without adding or subtracting anything, then we also be, can be spiritual master because we're actually delivering the goods, just like the postmaster is delivering a money order. Uh, the money actually reaches the person that it's intended for, not one uh, dollar more, not one dollar less. So that is the fundamental qualification of becoming a bona fide spiritual master. So the difficulty that we experience in life is the ephemerality of life. Things come and go. And they, when they go, it's very sad, especially when a pure devotee leaves this planet. It seems to be a very sad and devastating uh, experience. However, in Krishna consciousness, we never lament for the loss of a loved one, even if it's the uh, a pure devotee. In other words, there is sadness, but the sadness is not a mundane sadness for the loss of a body uh, that we were attached to. It's, of course, we're going to miss the, the direct association uh, of a pure devotee. But there's a purport in the Srimad Bhagavatam that speaks to this issue in, in a very pointed way. And Narada Muni, who is the greatest transcendental personality says when, when he's uh, speaking to Maharaj Brikshit he says O King in all circumstances whether you consider the soul to be an eternal principle or the material body to be perishable or everything to exist in the impersonal absolute truth or everything to be an inexplicable combination of matter and spirit Feelings of separation are due only to illusory affection and nothing more. Wow, that's a pretty strong statement by Narada Muni. In the purport, Prabhupada elucidates uh, the, let's say, uh, the meaning of this in more uh, explicit terms although Narada Muni can't be any more explicit in the way he expressed the Prikshit Maharaj. Prabhupada says, the actual fact is that every living being is an individual part and parcel of the supreme being, and his constitutional position is subordinate, cooperative service, either in his conditional material existence or in his liberated position of full knowledge and eternity, the living entity is eternally under the control of the Supreme Lord. But those who are not conversant with factual knowledge put forward many speculative propositions about the real position of the living entity. It is admitted, however, by all schools of philosophy that the living being is eternal and that the covering body of the five material elements is perishable and temporary. The eternal living entity transmigrates from one material body to another by the law of karma. And material bodies are perishable by their fundamental structures. Therefore, there is nothing to be lamented in the case of the souls being transferred into another body or the material bodies perishing at a certain stage. There are others also who believe in the merging of the spirit soul in the Supreme Spirit when it is uncovered by the material engagement. And there are others also 
who do not believe in the existence of spirit or soul, but believe in tangible matter. In our daily experience, we find so many transformations of matter from one form to another, but we do not lament such changing features. In either of the above cases, the force of divine energy is uncheckable. No one has any hand in it, and thus there is no cause. And thus there is no cause of grief. Well, can we accept this? We, we definitely feel aggrieved by the loss of a loved one, and especially a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. However, uh, there is an important point that differentiates devotees from mundane persons. That is, a devotee knows from the statements of Srila Prabhupada and from the behavior of the greatest devotees the gopis, that there are, uh, there are ways of honoring our love for someone and, and proving that it's actually love and not simply some temporary whimsical feeling. And that is uh, what's called vipralamba bhava. Love in separation. So, Akura took Krishna to Mathura. And later on, Krishna ended up in Dwarka. And in one sense, he left Vrindavana. And didn't come back again. So, what was the position of the gopis? And... Nanda Maharaj and Yasodamai and the inhabitants of Vrindavana. They were devastated, but yet they were able to keep Krishna in Vrindavan always by their remembrance of the Lord through talking about him, through enacting the pastimes that they experienced with him, through remembering him fondly through always keeping him right where they where he should be right in their heart the heart of hearts uh, and they never let go of him this is called vipralamba bhava love and separation is even greater than love and proximity and this is something we should cultivate. Lord Chaitanya came to this world over 500 years ago to demonstrate this love and separation. And in the uh, Nectar of Devotion, Prabhupada writes, <clears throat> Conjugal love is divided into two portions, Vipralamba or conjugal love and separation, and samboga, or conjugal love and direct contact. Vipralamba, separation, has three subdivisions known as purva raga, or preliminary attraction, mana, or seeming anger, and pravasa, or separation by distance. When the lover and the beloved have a distinct feeling of not meeting each other, that stage is called purva raga, the preliminary attraction. Or In Padyavali, Radharani told her companions, my dear friends, I was just going to the bank in Yamuna, and all of a sudden a very nice boy whose complexion is like a dark blue cloud became visible in front of my eyes. He glanced over me in a way that I cannot describe. But since this has occurred, I am sorry that I can no longer engage my mind in the duties of my household affairs. End of quote. This is an instance of preliminary attraction for Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 53rd chapter, verse 2, Krishna told the messenger Brahmana, who came from Rukmini, 
My dear Brahmana, just like Rupmini, I cannot sleep at night, and my mind is always fixed on her. I know that her brother, Rukmi, is against me, and that due to his persuasion, my marriage with her has been canceled. This is another instance of preliminary attraction. As far as mana, or anger, is concerned, there is the following incident described in Gita Govinda. When Srimati Radharani saw Krishna enjoying himself in the company of several other gopis, she became a little jealous because her special prestige was being dimmed. Therefore, she immediately left the scene and took shelter in a nice flower bush where the black drones were humming. Then, hiding herself behind the creepers, she began to express her sorrow to one of her consorts. This is an instance of a, of a seeming disagreement. An example of pravasa, or being out of contact because of living in a distant place, is given in the Padavali as follows. Since the auspicious day when Krishna left for Mathura, Srimati Radharani has been pressing her head on one of her hands and constantly shedding tears. Her face is always wet now, and therefore there's no chance of her sleeping even for a moment. End of quote. When the face becomes wet, the sleeping tendency is immediately removed. So when Radharani was always weeping for Krishna because of his separation, there was no chance of her getting any sleep for herself. In the Pralada Samhita, Uddhava says, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda, pain-stricken due to his due to being pierced by the arrows of Cupid, is always thinking of you, the gopis, and he is not even accepting his regular lunch, nor is he getting any proper rest. When the lover and beloved come together and enjoy one another by direct contact, the stage is called Samboga. There is a statement in Padavali as follows, Krishna embraced Srimati Radharani in such an expert manner that he appeared to be celebrating the dancing ceremony of the peacocks. Srila Rupa Goswami thus ends the western section of his ocean of the nectar of devotion. He offers his respectful obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who appeared as Gopala, the eternal form of the Lord. This ends the Bhaktivedanta summary study of the third division of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in the matter of the five primary relationships with Krishna. In this description of Vipralamba Baba, of course, we are not in the position of the gopis who are uh, liberated souls who attain their position of intimate contact with Krishna because of many, many, many lifetimes of service and devotion and who are experiencing these transcendental uh, emotions of separation from Krishna. But we can understand something that is especially in uh, the third, uh, let's say, uh, division of separation or pravasa, the separation by distance. When we actually love someone, we can never forget them. And the proof that we never forget them is that we follow their instructions on a daily basis and the following becomes more and more serious and more and more intense until we reach the point where as Lord Chaitanya said, says uh, that at one point he is his eyes are always wet with tears of love flowing constantly. He says, O Govinda, feeling separation, I am considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. And tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain, and I am feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. So, it is possible, as Lord Chaitanya demonstrated, to achieve such a state of contemplation and Activity. The contemplation is always thinking of pleasing the Lord, and the activity is devotional service. 
So when we become very, very serious about devotional service, especially following the regulative principles strictly and chanting Hare Krishna, minimum 16 rounds, but no maximum, just like Haridas Thakur was chanting 300,000 times a day the holy names of the Lord. So there's no maximum. And it, it, would, it would take him 11 and a half hours to try and finish his chanting. I'm, I'm only, excuse me, 23 and a half hours to try and finish his chanting. So uh, we're not on the level of Paridas Thakur, but we can uh, experience this single-mindedness attraction to Srila Prabhupada or a spiritual master like Bhakti Chiru Maharaj in the case of his disciples uh, where we meditate only on pleasing the spiritual master and that meditation has a practical form which is following the regulative principles chanting Hare Krishna and dedicating one's life to spreading the message of Krishna consciousness to all people that we meet for the rest of our life. So that's the proof that we actually love the spiritual master. If you love someone, you would never cause any harm to that person. So if we break the regulative principles, the spiritual master suffers because of our not following them. And also, if we maintain our relationship with the spiritual master, but we are uh, not following strictly, he promises to come back over and over again to deliver us in one way or another. So, we should not want to encumber the spiritual master with the reactions of our sinful activities. We should not want to force the spiritual master to keep coming back to the material world to try and save us. We sh it depends how much you love the spiritual master. Just like there are two people serving their spiritual master, but they were serving in a competitive way, and they got so involved in uh, trying to massage the spiritual master that they got into a fight. And while they were fighting, they were actually beating up the spiritual master. So we see that that type of, uh, let's say, extreme uh, behavior only hurts the spiritual master. It doesn't help him and it doesn't please him. So therefore, we rather increase our cooperation with other devotees. We decrease our any hint of enviousness or jealousy or animosity and we are always humble and meek in the execution of devotional service. These are the symptoms that one is actually an advanced devotee or as it says in the 12th chapter, Advaista Sarva Bhutanam Maitra Karana Evacha Nir Mama Nir Hankara Samadukha Sukham Shami Santusta Satatam Yogi Yatat Madrita Nishchaya Maya Pratamano Vidir Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. One who is not envious but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination. His mind and intelligence fixed on me, such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. So these are the qualities of a genuine devotee. And uh, again, uh, Krishna continues, Yasman no dvijate loko, lokan no dvijate chaya, harsha marsha bayo dvegar, mukto ya sachame priya. He for whom no one is put into difficulty, and who is not disturbed by anyone, who is equipoised in happiness and distress, fear and anxiety, is very dear to me. And then Krishna continues, Anapeksha suchir daksha, udasino gata vyata, sarvaramba parityaji, yomad bhakta same priya. My devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without cares, free from all pains, and not striving for some result, is very dear to me. 
And then also, yona hrisyati na dvesti, na sochati na kanksati, subha subha parityaji bhaktimam ya same priya. One who neither rejoices nor grieves, nor neither laments nor desires, and who renounces, renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things, such a devotee is very dear to me. And finally, samak satru na chamitre cha tata mana pamana yo, sitos nasugaduke su sama sanga vivara jitaha, tul yaninda strutir moani santusto yenakena chit, Aniketa stira matir bhaktimam me priyo nara. One who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equal poised in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge and who is engaged in devotional service. Such a person is very dear to me. So if we want to be dear to Krishna, here are the uh, symptoms that we're sincere about that. And it applies also to the spiritual master, the bona fide pure devotee who's influenced our life in such a way that we're willing to go to these, uh, let's say, noble ends to please him by our behavior, by our dedication, by our uh, unalloyed service. So it is a quality of pure devotees that uh, the suffering of others is intolerable for them. And therefore, they'll do whatever is necessary to help people get out of their unnecessary suffering. We suffer because of ignorance, because of forgetfulness of Krishna and because of our reluctance to engage in devotional service. So pure devotees like Narada Muni, they will go way out of their way to try and help persons who are in such terrible situation. And they are eternally liberated because their only thought is some Siddhir Haritoshanam, how to please Krishna how to please Guru. You please Krishna through following strictly the instructions of the Guru. So, this, uh, this verse today, Bhagavad, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.13.44, <clears throat> where Narada Muni says, in all circumstances, whether you consider the soul to be eternal or the material body to be perishable, etc., Feeling of separation are due only to illusory affection and nothing more. You notice he says, feeling of separation. A sincere devotee is never separated from his guru because the sincere devotee is always strictly following the instructions of guru and Krishna. That should be what we should remember today. And that is, there, there are so many reasons why we're indebted to Bhakti Chiru Maharaj for his uh, very high standard of devotional service to Srila Prabhupada and to the devotees. Therefore, we must honor him by strictly following his uh, example of always being a gentleman, perfect gentleman, always being gentle and modest and completely dedicated to pleasing Srila Prabhupada and what is also pleasing Srila Prabhupada is encouraging the devotees by kicking them up not kicking them down always kicking them up always inspiring them to do better and better in their service and in their following of Krishna consciousness so I want to thank Don again there is a wonderful uh, testimony and eulogy of, of Bhakti Chiru Swami and thank you all for listening. And may we all advance in our vipralamba bhava, love and separation of Prabhupada and his pure devotees like Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Bhakti Chiru Swami. Hare Krishna. <laughs>